I am super proud. Um, you know, I've been, you know, in this industry for 30 years and there's very yeah. few times yeah. you get a chance to meet artists who got their left brain and right brain thing on. Um, they <laughs> understand business and they understand great, cre great creativity. Um, mm -hmm. And I've got fortunate to know like some of the best of the best. And I got to tell you that it's a pleasure to sit here and speak with you, Russ, because I've watched you. you over the last five years and you're on that short list of artists who are about that business, who could write that song, go in there, put down that mm -hmm. 16 and then lead a booth and handle their business. So congratulations yeah. for making that short Thank list. You. And I've been fucking around giving people props just yeah. because I'm not that type of person. In fact, people no, think I I'm appreciate it, man. I've been, that I've been type a fan. Of person. <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah. a fan of yours and like admired everything you've done for a while. And I don't know if you remember, I think we probably had this conversation where how we met. Like, I was at a Brooklyn Nets game with uh, the publishing company I ended up getting with. And they were, you know, that was that was the end of the wine and dine. And then I met you after the game. <laughs> and, and like, that's how we met. And I was like, this is so I fly. I'm like, I just met Steve Stout courtside. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even. Uh, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't put me in on that. They just used me as a prop. Nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> they was trying to close a deal with the great artists in the game. So, Russ, what I what I want for this conversation is, this is United Masses Select. We did this conference to really teach people. You've been very kind and gracious to give of yourself and give your energy to help the industry. That's what I yeah. watch you, businessman. You're not like one of these selfish artists keeping the secrets to yourself. Um, right. You do want to share the knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. That's what you've always been about. So I just want to take yeah. it back from day one. I'm an artist. I'm sitting in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm on my yeah. ass. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get it off. That's Russ. What was Russ doing when he had to start grinding from day zero? 1,000 followers on your social yeah. accounts. You know you want to put your music out. Tell me how you yeah. scratched it together well i wasn't in jacksonville florida but yeah i, I just made that mistake yeah, I made yeah it I know. <laughs> no i know because i know people are going to get on you though people would have gone on you <laughs> not nah, but um honestly before even even before the thousand followers is really where it started because so i graduated high school 2010 at 17 right and i had been making beats since i was 14 I hadn't started rapping yet um and instagram came out 2010 so instagram was not even like a thing like that people weren't even on instagram you know, I, I made my first song 2011. And like I said, the gram came out 2010. So people were not on Instagram like that. It wasn't a thing. Spotify wasn't a thing like that. Apple Music didn't even come out till 2015. So it was really just on some like, that was when the blogs were really powerful. Like there was that, there was that space where, you know, I was flooding and all the writers had all these like blogs and shit have emails from me from fucking eight, nine, ten years ago because I was spamming everyone. I was spamming Pitchfork. I was spamming Pigeons and Planes. I was spamming Two Dope Boys, uh, DJ Booth, um, Fader, Complex, Double XL, everyone. I was spamming everyone because I was like, I saw something happen um, with an artist named Rory who was from Atlanta and I saw him put out one song. I forget what it was. He put out a song with the video and I saw every big blog and every small blog at like at the same time post the shit and it just went fucking nuts. Two days later, he's in a picture with Kanye West, you know what I'm saying? And, and Mac Miller's mm -hmm. fucking with him. And, and I was like, damn, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I see the game. I was like, if I can just get every single blog to post my shit at the same time, that's really the the crazy shit. But obviously that never happened for me. Some blogs supported like Two Dope Boys and DJ Booth and Rap Dose and Artist Manifesto and King LJ and, you know, if the other ones I'm definitely forgetting. But I, I, I realized that I couldn't just sit here and drop mixtapes from anonymity and think that I'm going to blow up. I really had this idea that I'm going to drop a mixtape uh, with fucking 400 followers on Twitter I don't even know if I had an Instagram at that point, 400 followers on Twitter and I'm going to just blow up because it's so good. And it's like, that's not how it works, you know? So I had to, I had to just keep on fucking hacking away. And I, so I kept on making all these mixtapes, but they were really albums. I was, you know, they were original music. I was 
producing and mixing everything myself. Um, and I did that 11 times. So and none you, of that you, shit. Were you buying but, beats on the internet and all that? And leasing beats and all that other shit? No. Or you, no, because I was you, making my like beats. So, yeah, you self-contained. I was, I was, I was doing everything. And like, was it the best it could have been? Yeah. Because that was the best I could do at the time. I didn't want to, you know, we used to outsource for, for my best friend, Bugis, who's another artist who I started like my company with when 17 and we went to high school together. But when I was just producing his shit, we used to get our shit mixed by, uh, by Ali back in like 2010, 11. Like we found him on Twitter, you know, when like we would just go to Western Union and wire him like hundred two hundred dollars to mix like back then like um but we ended up just being like nah we want to just do the shit ourselves so i had to just i figured out everything by myself and it saved me a lot of money it saved me a lot of time like the reason why i was able to crank out so much music is because it was so self-sufficient it's like i didn't have to wait to go book a studio i didn't have to wait to go get a beat from somebody i didn't have to wait to get someone to engineer to mix it you know, all that shit takes up time. You could go through fucking 80 beats. And by the time you're even maybe on the 79th beat that you're listening to that you're finally inspired by, you're fucking gas creatively. You're like, damn, I'm fucking tired. So, you know, I was able to put out, let's call it three mixtapes a year, you know, which is roughly around 40 to 50 songs a year. Um in a short period of time. So from 2011, December 2011, so basically fucking 2012 to the end of 2014, I put out 11 projects. And, you know, when I say none of them worked, I mean that none of them made me blow up. None of them, I didn't drop any of them and get like followers or anything. At the end of that 11th project, I had a thousand followers on Twitter. So Wait, that's how the rich. So let me, just, let me just slow this down because. Yeah. I'm I'm an entrepreneur, so I know yeah. what the grind means. Eleven projects. Yeah. No real feedback. Nothing. You're doing it because you love it. And at the yeah. end of eleven projects, you get to a thousand followers. Yes. <laughs> pathetic. I know. It's pathetic. But I'll say this. I'll say this. So at the end of eleven projects, I'm at a thousand followers on Twitter, right? But I had this, I had this fucking, I, I mean, Colts fan base sounds fucking insane. You have 11, you have a thousand followers, but I had some kids in Tumwater, Washington, right? Who high school kids who were fans who like called me and were like, man, we love your shit. And my uncle is a promoter and like, you can do a show out here. And I was like, sick. I was like, but like, I'm broke. I can't get out there. I don't have anywhere to stay. So this kid, Tanner, um, Tumwater, Washington, he flew me out, right? And my friends came out with me. I think they paid for their own shit. They figured it out. Um, and we stayed in his house, in his house. And we did a show in Tumwater, Washington. My first ever headline show is in Tumwater, Washington for like 50 high school kids. And it was lit. I thought that shit was fucking awesome. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... Um, you know, so, but, it, but I came back home and I was like, all right, like, I'm not on, I'm not popping. Like, I got to switch the approach up because I, I, I did, I started to take a look at the industry and I realized something with SoundCloud. Now, here's the thing. I strayed away from SoundCloud. I've, I stayed very far away from SoundCloud simply because, to be honest, I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like the aesthetic of it. I didn't just, I don't know. It just, I, I hadn't come around to it yet, but I noticed a lot of other artists using it. So I was like, all right, hold on. Cause I was basing all my success off of media fire downloads. I would put up my mixtapes on media fire. And if that shit got a thousand downloads in a week, I was fucking drinking tequila. You know what I'm saying? So, um, then I was like, all right, hold on, let me take a look at the industry. And I noticed people on SoundCloud putting up their albums on there. And I noticed that the plays would be the highest at song one. And then they would decrease as the shit went down, unless there was a big feature. And so I was like, this is interesting. I was like, all this tells me is that everyone is down to listen to one song. It's getting to that second song that pisses people off. And it's like, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Instead of dropping three mixtapes a year, let's call it, instead of dropping 52 songs total a year over the course of three mixtapes, and really that all that means is three posts a year. Here's one post of an album, here's another one, here's another one. I was like, 
why don't I drop the same amount of music, but just differently? And why don't I drop one song albums every week? Because I know off of just studying the analytics of the game, I know y'all are all down to click on one song. So I'll just drop a one song album every week until I blow up because I believed in the music. So before I did that, though, I, I knew I wanted to. I believed so much that I was going to blow up that I was like, let me go make an album on the side and keep it in the tuck. That ended up being my debut album. Because I'm like, I don't want to blow up and then have to scramble and make some shit. I want to blow up and easily be able to capitalize. So first I made an album, a rough skeleton of an album, like a 14 song thing that I was sitting on. And I went and recorded a bunch of songs, picked the best 26 because that's half a year. And so I figured, look, if I can have half a year mapped out, let's say if I get to song 26 and I'm still not on, by that time I would have had 26 more. So I'll be okay. It's enough of a cushion. So... I had an album I was sitting on and 26 songs I was sitting on before I put out anything. And so then I just started rolling out a song a week until shit popped. And sure enough, um, because of consistency, momentum, and most importantly, quality music, um, and me doing fucking, you know, uh, cringe lip syncing videos in the studio to like my R&B songs, you know, this shit, this shit, you know, snowballed effect, you know? So um, that was really the come up. That was really the Did come up. Ever, That's why it's like another plan besides. Did you? I have another plan? Yeah. Yeah. You don't NBA. talk about. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, For real. <laughs> For real. If I would like, bro, if <laughs> you know, and I'm 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 five eight with a bun, five seven though, probably. Um, but <laughs> it's like I was I was doing basketball religiously. You know, I played in high school, but I stopped playing because I wanted to make music and make beats and like politics and sports and whatever. But I don't know. I just, I believe that's the type of person I am. I get obsessed with shit. And I would have, I don't care if I, I would have been Pablo Prigioni at that, at the worst. I would have somehow found a way into the league at 35 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like I would have made my way there somehow. So yeah, I was never I was never down to do some regular shit. I I and it's almost like from a narcissistic ego thing, I just always thought I was fucking great. I always thought that since I was fucking two, I thought I was better than that person and that person and I just didn't. I don't know I don't know why there's such a bad rap for people who like, oh, you just think you're better than everyone. It's I'm, like I am I'm on that shit right now. I, I think yeah. I, I'm not I really think I'm better than everybody. Like You're supposed to. I don't get it. What's the problem? Like, like with, with, with what I do, I've been yeah. fucking an entrepreneur since I was 15, 16 years old. I've right. been in the business since I was 21. The music yeah. business, engine kid and play. I got more energy than anybody. I'm ready to fuck right. with anybody. Like, right, right, right now. No problem. Um, so I get it. I get the mentality. And when I met you, like I seen it immediately because very few people walk around with the confidence of self that there's nothing that can stop them, period, end of yeah. story. They're not That's saying it. those words because those are good words to say. They're saying that yeah. because they can't look themselves in the mirror. They can't sleep at night unless yeah. they are moving forward. And I know that about yeah. you, um, but I'm going to get to that in a second. So yeah. did you, when you started making your money, you started investing in equipment, you started buying equipment to get your sound better, is that what you said no, the so, person you said some of the money? No, with? so um, the thing, I, I, I was fortunate, man. I was fortunate because Bugis, uh, Bugis, my best friend since I was 12, uh, he had the setup in his house. And it wasn't like, it, it was a $2,500 setup, which is a lot of money, right? It's a lot of money when you're just trying to get on. It was a lot of money, but it was it was on some like gradually acquired as a gift type of thing. Right. From his from his dad. So um, but, you know, we're in the unfinished basement. Pipes are running. You got to you got to stop recording to let the pipes go. It, you know what I'm saying? So but it was a good enough setup where if I could figure out how to fucking work these buttons on this software, we can get it to sound right. You know, so um, no, once you know, when I started making money, what I started investing in was uh, was being able to to have peace of mind <laughs> because i realized that the number one thing i need 
is peace of mind. I never want to be in a financially desperate situation. So even with my video team, Edgar Estevez, right? When I, this is, this is, I want to say December, 2015, right? So for context, 2015, the summer of 2015 is when I put out, I put out what they want. And then like two weeks later, I put out, pull the trigger. November 11th, I put out losing control. And then December, I put out Do It Myself. These are four songs that have sold over fucking 10 million records type of shit, you know? So mm -hmm. people are always like, how did you do it? I be doing the song a week shit. It doesn't work. I'm like, you got to drop fire shit. It's like, I mean, I wasn't dropping duds. I was dropping massive songs. But so Edgar hits me December, right? Now, this is just, this is when I start believing in this universe shit and, and, and the alchemist shit where when you're walking your path and your truth, the universe conspires to help you because I was minding my business. I get a DM from this director, Edgar. I'll never forget the numbers. I have a wild photographic memory, but Edgar had 40,000 followers on the gram. I had 7,500. I had never worked with a director before that was like lit, that was professional. Um, and Edgar DM me and he just goes, I want to shoot everything. And I was like, fuck it. Like, let's fucking go. Let's do it. I've been waiting for this. Like, it was like some, it, it was like a blessing fell out of the sky. So then in fucking January, uh, I go down to Miami because at that point, that's when I first started making money was end of 2015. So I got enough money. You know, I got a couple thousand dollars in my bank account. You ain't so still I still independent. Like the music was independent. Going oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still independent. Still independent. Yeah. So I didn't part. Yeah. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. But I was putting everything on Spotify and Apple, too, and iTunes. But the links that I was promoting was never iTunes, Spotify, Apple. I was only promoting SoundCloud because I was still on some like, I don't want to promote y'all buying my shit or having to download anything. To I'm just trying to get y'all to hear it. And SoundCloud was the easiest way to get y'all to just click it, hear it. You like it? Cool. If not, cool. So January, go down to Miami. Uh, Edgar shot Losing Control for free because he believed. And so that's a fucking blessing. Now, granted, the Losing Control video wasn't even if that cost him money, it wouldn't have costed that much. But still, just the fact that he was down to do that. Um, confidence and he he said in you. Somebody got yeah. confidence in you. Somebody right. Believes so in you. that's it. And so he believed in that record and he believed in what they want. And he came to he came up to Atlanta with one other dude, um, just handheld camera, no lights, no anything. We went to Callaway. I don't know if anyone even knows this because people always ask, like, where did you shoot what they want? Because, like, the leaves are pink and all this shit. We went to Callaway Gardens. We shot a whole fucking video, and that shit was trash. I was, like, wearing all white, sipping wine, walking through the woods, and it was trash. And we were like, what the fuck are we going to do? I had a whole... I drove up there in my Nissan, my 97 Nissan Pathfinder with them two in the, in the car. And I was, like, I was like, well, I got another outfit in the car. And in Callaway Gardens, we pulled up on this, like, cabin. And we were just like, you know what? Let me change outfits. Let's go to this cabin and let's just like make some shit work. Let's just fucking turn up for like 45 minutes. So we shot that shit in 45 minutes because it started to rain. And in post-production, Edgar just turned all the leaves and shit pink. And that was the What They Want video. And that shit has like 300 million views and is three times platinum. So it's like, you know, I, as much credit as I do give myself because I deserve it because I did so much myself. Um... I do give credit for the act of belief of, of other people. You know, someone like Edgar coming into the equation out of fucking nowhere being like, let's shoot everything. I believe in you and I'm not going to charge you for these videos. That changed my life. That changed my life. And I understand that. I understand that some people don't have Edgar. Right. And now here's to the people who say, oh, well, if you don't have Edgar, what do you do? I'll tell you what we did between 2011 and 2014. Me and Bugis, we got a Canon 60D camera. We recorded every studio session because we knew we were going to be legends and we wanted everything documented. Um, mm -hmm. And I would set up the camera sometimes for my Too Many video, a song that I have called Too Many. I set the camera on a tripod and I stood in front of it in the unfinished basement studio that we were recording. And I fucking press record. Did a bunch of different takes, bootlegged Final Cut Pro, like I torrented the shit, I didn't buy it, shout out to Final Cut, and I edited the shit myself and put it out, and it had 60 million views, and it's gold. And another song, Goodbye, uh, we were in LA, okay. we were in LA, and Boogus shot Goodbye. Boogus held the camera, the 60D, shot Goodbye, and 
I edited the shit and we put it out two days later. And that was the first thing I'd ever put out. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. So we put that video out February 2014 or maybe 2013. I think it was 2014. And it got 100,000 views December 6, 2014. Because that was the day of our like show that we were throwing in Atlanta. Like we scrounged up money and we threw a show in Atlanta. And there was like 10 people there. But, um, you know, so... Even if you don't have ego, you got to make shit work. Me and Bugus went and got a fucking camera and we were like, well, shit, we can't wait around for someone to, we can't wait around for an ego to fall out of the sky. Go get the fucking camera, figure this shit the fuck out. We have taste. No, 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 listen. It's a, you're, you're, listen, you're an entrepreneur. I can tell you, you want I can tell you every great story of any, whether it be Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos or Jay-Z yeah. or Matt B. And I tell you those same exact stories. Of making it happen, mm -hmm. I remember we That's were it. shooting. Uh, I, I mean, I can tell you amazing Jay Z stories about shit yeah. like this. He would stand outside of a place that was crowded after he was already Jay Z after Hard Knock Life, and wow. doing a sync live off a box on the floor, like trying Jeez. to shoot a video, literally at an award show. We were at the MTV <laughs> Awards. And Jay Z after Hard Knock Life, which we the video was for Jigga. No, no, um, it was for the, yeah, it was for Jigga. What's my motherfucking name? And we was trying to shoot the videos for the Rough Riders compilation. He oh, literally shit. got out of the fucking car in yeah. front of the crowd ten times in a row, shooting the video live, and he was already Jay Z. That's and crazy. Me, me <laughs> That's and crazy. That, me and Damon Dash on the red carpet trying to get all these famous stars when they walk in to say, Jigga, to get the live That's sync. That's crazy. He's standing there. That's crazy. Because he's already Jay-Z at that point, so that's fucking insane. <laughs> you know, already sold 5 million records. Standing. Yeah, that's, that's different. That's different. Standing that's there different. like a guy who get no money. Right, right. <laughs> Right. Like, this is the type of shit that we Man, came we up used to, with. We used to, we used to print up a thousand CDs through physical CDs through CD Baby at the time. This is this is before I was making mixtapes. I was just producing for Boogus, and Boogus would print up a thousand CDs, um, and we would go around to various high schools and stand in the parking lot and pass out CDs for free, and we, you know. And just bite the L on the money. Yo, you know, on Nas's, when I launched Nas's album in 95, I would go to every crowd, every club that was hot, and I would give everybody parking tickets. But the parking tickets was promoting the album. Uh. <laughs> and all you got was a fucking. And look, I made this shit like a ticket, and you flipped it over, and it was like Nas's album coming out July 3rd. But July second, ninety six. That's Because you know, everyone's gonna look at their parking ticket. I would go to every Genius. club and stick it out. Genius. Come on, man. I'm a marketing. That's guy. genius. So, well, thank you. Because uh, I think what you do is fucking genius. Let's, thank you. Let's, why did you sign a record deal? Let's talk to about level that the plane to, to level the playing field. Because so let's go back to 2016. That's what people need to do first, right? is go back to the landscape of the industry 2016. So I had a song, What They Want, that was blowing up. And I noticed, you know, cause I'm a fucking nut on my phone. I'm trying to figure out where the play is coming from. I noticed at first it was coming from these sports pages on Instagram that kept using it in the background of shit. I noticed that. Um, and I noticed it was in this Spotify playlist called Rap Caviar. But Rap Caviar at that time was like, that was not this coveted, thing you had to be really like in the know in the know in 2016 to be hip to that shit like i remember seeing it in that and it didn't really do anything for me because i wasn't familiar with the value of that playlist and spotify yeah. and the whole shit so i'm just looking around at my competition quote unquote and, and not competition per se but my peers and people i look up to i'm like well shit drake this person did it they're on the radio so, well they got labels and so i'm like you know what I'm like, I've built up enough leverage where I got, you know, I got a fan base that's going crazy. Uh, you know, Kylie Jenner in April of 2016 had posted my shit 
So like I was lit. I had Kara Lewis that my manager Milan got me with. Um, so I had my I had my touring on lock. You know, I went and got a lawyer. I went and got a business manager. I had my manager and I had my fans and I had a whole shit ton of music that I owned and I had music that was going fucking crazy. And I had music like what they want. That was I remember it being at like 55 on the iTunes charts. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, it just needs to get the button pushed on it. And it'll go nuts. You know, that's how I'm thinking in 2016. I'm thinking if I get with a label and they push the button with this radio shit, I'm out of here. Um, so I got with the label to really just like level that playing field. I wanted to be on radio. I was not, I was not, am not ever going to be one of these artists that's just like, nah, I'm cool in the underground. I was never with that shit. I'm trying to have the biggest songs in the world. I'm trying to have the most number ones. I'm trying to shit on everything and everyone. So I was like, nah, I'm going to go fuck with this label because I think this is what's going to help push the button on my career. So I got with them and it was, and it was a cool experience, you know, because they did take my shit to radio. I ended up being able to meet a lot of program directors and make relationships with DJs and, and just people who work shit at radio. So it was dope, you know, it was dope. I wish there was a little bit more success at radio, but I also learned that being with the label doesn't guarantee radio success. That's what I learned, <laughs> you know? So what is the biggest and if you can't talk about this, then you don't have to. What is the biggest farce that artists have at record companies? They, what is their biggest, the biggest thing is an artist think, oh, I'm signing the record deals, so this is about to happen. And then what you, do you find out doesn't happen? <laughs> what you find out, right? As an artist, you think that if I sign with this label, I will get this success. And the reality that you, the, the shit that you realize is that a label is a middleman, meaning when they hit up Spotify and when they hit up Apple and when they hit up the radio, they can get told no. It's just that simple. It's not just this like, oh, I'm with the label now. So now I'm in today's top hits and now I'm in rap caviar or I'm with the label now. So now I'm top 40 at radio. Now it's like, I, you know. They can just say no. You still have to. You're dealing with the middleman. Like unless you unless you have a deal with Spotify, right? A deal with and and I'm shocked. Well, I know they're doing deals on the low and shit, but I'm shocked. Like Spotify or Apple uh, haven't just started fucking labels because guess what? Well, I'm, well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the corruption behind that. The corruption uh, behind that was when Spotify was being built. Young Daniel Eck, he's running around building this idea to get the license from the record companies when they did the yeah. deal they did two things they first they took equity in his company and said mm -hmm. if we're going to give you a shot to build a business of our content we, yeah. we want to own piece of your company a and b they put in the contract that if you compete with us we could pull our music license so Spotify contractually, if they deem to be look like competing with the labels, the labels right. can pull all the fucking Taylor Swift music, all the Beatles. Right. All the wow. So that's that's how they the, the record companies have been bitter because of the success of MTV. They felt like MTV became really successful because of yeah. the music companies, yeah. because the music companies was paying for the videos to get on MTV. Right. And MTV became this big, global, phenomenally successful, rich company. And right. the record companies felt like they built that. And they never, ever, ever forgave themselves for that. So every right. other company that came up that was trying to do anything using music, they definitely made sure they took a pound of flesh from them. And the part that's fucked up is they took the pound of flesh from them, but never shared the, mu the money back out with the artists. Because the truth of the matter is, the guys who own record companies, the well, the, the guys, none of them own it. They're all employees. They're not the brightest guys. They're certainly yeah. not entrepreneurs at all. Right. I know. At they're all. They're not brilliant. They're not smart. They can't fuck at with all. me. They they don't even <laughs> want to talk to me. They're, they're <laughs> they think that it's wrong if they sit and talk to me. They don't even know what I'm pulling out of their little brains. <laughs> like they, they, they right. don't talk to me. Um, you know, artists got artists got artists got checks when when the labels sold their shares in Spotify. Artists got checks. I got a I got a fucking quarter million dollar check 
from fucking Spotify that's while awesome. being signed. Why? That's because true. they did some they did some shit. But now it makes sense what you're talking about because it's like oh because they sold the shares or whatever. But I want to say right here's the thing. No, well, they, listen, there was a lot of public pressure. They didn't want to pay the money. Sure. There was a lot of public pressure, and they used it like if you weren't recouped, they use it against your recruitment. Um, they took the money and use it against your recruitment. Yeah. And they paid out some of the artists on the shares, and that's 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 fine. They made a lion's share of money for basically using the artist catalog and the artist's right. hard work to say, you want to use our artists, you gotta give us equity in the company. And that's right. what they did. And 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 that's what they used to stop Spotify and Apple from competing with from them. competing. That's gonna yeah. change. But that, but that, that will change. And that's I know it will because you, you know you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna just take a shift of where independent artists go to Spotify and say, "Look, I'm I'm completely I got no tethers to any of these labels. Let me just fuck with y'all." Because here's the thing, right? If you look at today's top hits, 26 million followers on this playlist, right? It's 50 slots. So if you're you know how many artists in the world are putting out songs, 50 fucking slots. The thing with Spotify is that. If you're with a label, all the label is is some dude or girl that's going to hit up Spotify and be like, hey, can you put this in? And they can just literally be like, no. Yo, <laughs> I got it's the, the crazy. Way. By the way, I know everybody at Spotify. I know, I but know they can tell you no. Person. It doesn't matter. They can tell you no. The, th the, thing, the thing to do is to go direct to Spotify. Like, what's going to end up happening is artists are going to start doing direct deals with Spotify and with Apple. Because guess what? If I'm signed to Spotify, I better be in every fucking major playlist. Otherwise, what's the point of being signed to Spotify? But that's, but that's the reason why Spotify also don't want to do it. Because if everybody signs to Spotify, they certainly don't have enough slots for everybody. Right? And they don't want to disappoint no. anybody. So right. they much rather go to the record company. That so let's pull the reason why, and I learned a lot talking to you. In when I started United Masters, the idea was I wanted to make sure that artists never sign bad record deals again. Um, mm -hmm. I seen it before. I manage a lot of great artists, uh, yeah. and I seen some of the deals, eighteen percent royalty deals, guys underwater, you know, selling three million records but still ain't got no motherfucking money. All that type of shit yeah. because the music videos are expensive. They mm -hmm. disproportionately take charge you for the music video. Um, and I realized that the record company was almost like they walked up to you, bought your name and likeness, put a yeah. price on it, and then you yeah. rented it, your name and likeness from them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah. Look, you look at potential. Here's a million dollars. Now I own your name and likeness, and now you right. rent it from me. For 18%, 20%. How about that? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's and, and all of the and all of the and all of the improvements that you do to yourself, I own. So right. your nose job, your jewelry, your cars, your look, your aura, I own, and you right. get a percentage of it. Right. All because right. I gave you a million dollars. Right. Lucky. Right. Fuck you. I know this heavily. Is that's some slave. And by the way, I told you this in the fucking contracts in the '90s. It said the original, the original version was called the master, and the duplicates are called slaves. Guys have no contracts. Shit. It says slaves in the agreement, man. It says slaves really? in the agreement. How still, you know? still, still? They change it now, but the original on Ampex tape, the original Ampex tape was the master recording. And all yeah. the duplicates that you would make, that you would send out everywhere, they were called slaves in fucking contracts. That's fucking insane. Yes. That's insane. Well, it's what, not I more think... insane than motherfuckers walking around saying I'm the head of urban music. Like, what the fuck is that? What the uh, fuck well, is urban do you know music? I, do you know how many conversations I had about that fucking word? I'm like, that's a euphemism. That is a euphemism. We know what you're trying to say. You're the head of urban music. How the fuck or are you supposed to work or, or, or when you're or when you're when you're in the meeting with with a bunch of white people and they're like, this is gonna be great for our urban audience. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, Yo, you should tell me. <laughs> Yo, they, they don't even talk to me. I told them I wrote a book, The Tanning of America, and I started the book by saying that urban is the definition of space. Rural, mm. urban, 
in suburban. Those are just three mm. measurements of density as a people. I don't know how the fuck urban became black, AKA black, AKA Negro. I have no exactly. idea what that is, but um, record companies run around saying, guess what? You've been promoted. What am I? I'm the head of urban music. Oh my God. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? Show my mother that? She's going to look at me like I'm a fucking derelict. The head of urban. <laughs> make the hottest shit in the building. Yeah. Look, it's an urban anything. I'm the head of the hottest shit in the building. The fuck are you talking about? Right. These guys get on my nerves. They think they're doing somebody a fucking favor. Pop I Smoke, know. That's way hotter than Taylor Swift. Way hotter than Taylor Swift. Way. Right. That shit is right. over. In fact, all of that non-pop shit, all of that non-urban shit, all you see is these white kids running around faking like they're black kids. Yeah, that's all they do. Yeah, that's all well, they you know, do. Is you know what happened too? You know what happened too? Hip hop took over every other genre. When I was in high school, the there was a there was a crowd of white people. There was numerous crowds of white people who would listen to, um, you know, soft rock, alternative this, emo this. Did it? All those kids now have a hip hop artist who makes that type of shit. So yeah. it, hip hop is just so huge because hip hop is just hip hop. Why don't you tell me an artist right shit, now, but now they make everything? What pop, artists, what pop artists are breaking without even putting a rap record? How many records are they gonna put Sway Lee on? I know. So <laughs> featuring Rainbow, so and so featuring Sway Lee. Let's yes. just act, we all those beaten down Katy Perry bum ass artists running around putting Sway Lee on a record because they need right. a black guy to authenticate them. I mean, get the or, fuck um, out of here. Ty. Yeah. Well, but that's the thing. It's like... You said Ty Dolla like, Sign? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah they Ty. Ty. So they're, a little, they're like fucking herbs and spices. Little Sway Lee. Well, little because Ty it's... It, you know what it is? Because they know, they know that black people and hip-hop culture dictates what's cool and what's popping, what's hot. So, if that's the case... Me just pushing this white pop artist by herself or by himself, it's like, yeah, it it's gonna it could work, it'll work, but you know what'll really just get us in with the urban crowd is if we you know what I'm saying? Like it's fucking insane the conversation. Did somebody get Sway Lee on the phone? <laughs> Where is DJ Mustard? <laughs> Why do you keep calling the same four motherfuckers, man? This is the funniest shit. It's that crazy. shit is crazy. I know you're not doing that. Yo, let's talk about um you put out the receipts on these niggas last week, and you caused a stir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> caused, like, yo, what made you drop the receipts? I've been, I like, because, you know what's funny? I did a fucking DJ Vlad interview, I think 2016, and it maybe came out 2017, but it was in 2016. And I remember in the interview, I was, like, very relatively unknown, and I remember saying, I'm making six figures a month off my catalog. I remember all the comments, yeah, I... Yeah, who the fuck are you? Make it. I. Right. I was. That's why I was talking like that back then. Because I've been making six figures a month off my catalog for years. For years. For How did you years. do the record deal? How did you do the record deal? I love your manager for this, your lawyer, the team you had around you. That my tune core, my tune core was excluded. My tune core was look. How did you, I got, nobody did that. Nobody was doing that. Everybody well, well, gave no, Yeah, but you gotta understand. Nobody nobody was doing that because nobody had that. Nobody had, nobody has ever had the uh, type of independent catalog I had while going into major label meetings. Like, no one's had a fucking 300 song plus independent catalog, and then you're talking to major labels. So it's like, nah, you can't touch this. This is all, this is all BC. This is before Columbia. You can't touch this. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is all my shit. Now, moving forward, cool. Let's rock out. Let's do these albums. It's an album deal, right? Cool. But everything else, Y'all don't get that. It's got nothing to do with y'all. So I, I, that's why, like, and your album, I don't have anything bad. To, I don't have anything bad to say about Columbia because Columbia no, really. But you, did tell me, you told me this. You said Steve. They revolutionized yeah. New Deals, though. You re the, the, a you revolutionized New Deals. I revolutionized it, but the fact that they were the reason why I fucked with them and why I went with them instead of any other label is because they were very, very understanding of my situation and they were down to fuck with me. But so yeah, when you were putting out those albums on Columbia, your catalog kept going up. You were making more money coming in through the side door. Oh yeah, because guess what? 
me putting out an album makes my other songs blow up. <laughs> it is a disgusting finesse. But it's like, it's life. Everyone wins. It's not like they weren't making money. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I just took out the greed of it. Y'all still made millions. I made millions. I maybe made some shit over here, as I should. But they're not complaining. They made millions of dollars, too. Yo, so you you broke out the receipts. Mm. What, are these, what are these rappers right now who are buying all these cars, fucking the money up, they yeah. see you drop receipts. What are they saying to you? So what, what, tell, um, me tell me what it feel like out there. You, you, you're independent. You're smart as a motherfucker. You got the money. They don't. They can't fuck with you on or off the court. <laughs> <laughs> they're, so, they're not. Honestly, bro, I, I've had conversations with a couple of them, but um, I'll say this. I'll say this. Here's the reality that a lot of rappers need to just they need to come to terms with. I think a lot of rappers, as much as they want to talk about major labels and the pitfalls of them, a lot of rappers are not built to be independent. They're not, they're scared to be in the wild and fend for themselves. And, you know, cause they've been relying on, they've been on the tit of fucking major labels, you know, and radios and playlisting and all this and all these things. And, and, and getting these huge advances that it's scary going out into the wild and being like, I got to do everything myself and the money might be, uh, the money might not be as much, but it comes in more often. Mm -hmm. So yeah, up front, the label might give you more, but that's one check in that whole year. You told, you I'm told me, you said, Steve, you said, yo, Steve, I'm eating during the pandemic. The checks are coming in. You, oh, yeah. you told me eating during the pandemic. No problem. No, the Bro, pandemic, my shit, my, the pandemic my wasn't going to speak up to you. No, but that's why, like, I feel, I, I genuinely do feel, um, like, damn, I feel like, like y'all are fucked up and this is crazy because that shit is definitely affecting people. And and, and when I'm talking, I'm talking strictly artists. I'm like, yeah, this is definitely affecting y'all. But I'm like, I can't, I can't necessarily feel bad for these artists that are fucked up during the pandemic because y'all wouldn't be fucked up if you own something. And my shit, is, all my shit has gone up. My shit has gone up. You know, I stopped those receipts at 2017 for a reason because I don't need the IRS at all my shit like that. But um, my shit has gone up, and now I'm 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 putting out music independently again, and I'm about to like I'm about to really show people at this level and at this platform how you can fuck shit up. That's that's like I'm on some operation. Give all the game. Full transparency. I'm gonna show y'all that you can make a million dollars a month and not talk to anybody about shit. You know what I'm saying? That's my fucking goal. And I know I, pro I look. Yeah, I promise yeah, yeah. you. Within a year, yeah, within yeah, a year yeah, of this post. conversation, within a year of this conversation, I'm posting a receipt of making a million in a month on my I own. Believe promise. You. By the way, I, I want to be on. I want to be part of it. You already know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm making, yeah. I want to be in the rust business. I think this guy. <laughs> I think he's smart as a motherfucker, and he can teach a lot of artists a lot of game. You got to get beyond the arrogance, but the arrogance is what gives you the energy to know that anything yeah. is possible. Because if you're not telling yourself that, if you rely on everybody else, they'll have you out here fucked up, walk, walking around with your hands out. Um, and you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy about like the whole arrogance thing? I'm like, I don't think y'all realize that when you're doing something like this, and when you're embarking on this insane of a journey. You almost need so much extra cushion of arrogance because they're going to beat you down. And if you're just kind of like, mm, I'm OK about myself and you kind of like yourself, you're going to get beat down to the point where you're like, you're just done. You're out. You know, let me start out at 200 out of 100 on the on the do I fuck with myself level so that even if y'all beat me down 90 points, I'm still at 110 out of 100. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still lit. So it, you got to have that extra, you need that extra buffer for when the world gets a hold of you and sinks their teeth into you. Do you think, do you foresee the entire industry turning into independent artists? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm going to lead it because I think the second that I show people, yo, you, you can make a million dollars a month and not just a month, but you can get paid, you're getting paid weekly. So you can make a million dollars a month 
independent off your music, what you tell me what you need a label for. And now this this is for this for a lot of these established artists too, who who their deals are, you know, record deals end. It's Yo, the artist's you know choice. What? Those guys are hooked. Those guys are hooked on the chat. That's what man. I'm saying though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, like I'd be wanting to say, like, I'll go to a guy like Usher. What the fuck you need a record company for, Usher? Are you crazy? What you talking yeah. about? They're not gonna do Usher shit. Usher does not need a record label. Usher's Usher. Usher, Usher. Usher thinks Usher thinks that the record company, he's gonna play the song. Yeah. And they're gonna go and take it to today's top hits. And overnight, boom, something's gonna happen. Those right. guys are doing nothing. I told Pharrell yeah. this. They Pharrell did the song Lemon. Pharrell, we were working together. Pharrell yeah. wanted to bring the song Lemon to um Columbia. They said they could do yeah. this, that, and the third. Motherfucker, you got Rihanna on the record. No shit. I can get it played. Yeah. It's Rihanna on the record. And yeah. you know what they did? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Totally nothing. They gave it to yeah. everybody. Work. The best marketing for an artist is the artist themselves. That's it. Period. That's it. Rely That's it. That's the secret that people don't fucking realize. But because they're so conditioned to rely on labels and they think be because it's it's a brainwashing. That's how it's almost like it's almost like getting kidnapped and you've been kidnapped for so long that you don't realize that you're that it's a toxic relationship you're in. And that you like yeah. no, you can survive without yeah. this kidnapper. You fall in love with the kidnapper. You fall in love with the kidnapper. That's what it yeah. really is. It's like Yo, you need to get out of this dude's fucking grasp and fucking go live on your own. <laughs> like, you need to break the fuck out. All these, artists, man, these guys don't need record deals no more, man. They need mm -mm. to be independent, get a good man. Watch, 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 wa wa watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You think that if Drake right now, completely independent, if Drake right now posts a link on his, a picture on the gram of his new album, Lincoln bio, it isn't, fuck a Lincoln bio, new album out, fully independent. Drake will make fucking $10 million a week for fucking 60 weeks. Way, you know it's I'll like insane. Drake is about, Drake is, I said this before, and it's about to come out in the next six months. Drake is about to get the biggest bag in the history of the music business by far. He should. Because because, well, A, he should, and B, they don't want that to happen. Because the day that that happens, you might as well close the business down. The day, Drake, should like go Drake, indep Drake should go Drake independent, goes independent and fuck the whole shit up. The music, if Drake goes independent, the music business is over. If Drake Watch goes this. independent, the music business dies, dies. Watch this, bro. Drake uploads God's plan on a digital distributor for whatever money it is, less than fucking $10. Right? Fine, you pay for the beat. 10, 20, 30, 40K, whatever the fuck it is. Pay for it to get mixed, four racks, cool. So you're all in, tops 50K, tops. That song, you you owning it forever and getting paid weekly on it, bro, you're making a million dollars a week off of that song for like life. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's different. The day, like if Drake goes independent, this whole shit, this whole industry gets turned upside down. But that's why... I'm independent, do putting out music you're independently, and 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 I'm gonna fuck this whole industry up. Gonna I'm gonna it. fuck this whole shit up. You are definitely. I believe you're gonna do it. We got this kid on United Masses. Um, he works with us. His name is Toby Nagawi. This kid is about yep. to go crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. He put, he put out a song just like you every week for three Smart. years. Every Sunday. Smart. He's a Jeez. record. Yo, for the last three years, he fucks with us. This kid, all of a sudden, Diddy reposting them, Madonna reposting, Aguilera reposting. Wow! Everything. Right now, see this, momentum. This week, Momentum's a real Nicole, thing. And he's gone. And he's a good dude. Yeah. It's a hardworking dude, just like you. Like hardworking people who give a fuck about themselves, who are not selling yeah. their asshole be because they need a record company to authenticate them, and they yeah. believe they can do it on their own. And he's getting fucking paid. Yeah. And I love yeah. And I love seeing what you're doing, man. And like you inspire me. This company, United Masters, um, the fact that we now have this tier select where you just pay 
You should have given me a fucking shout out for that because of the Chinese restaurant conversation. <laughs> shout out right now. Shout out. Tell the world that I influenced that business. No, we were sitting there. We were sitting at the top of Philippe Chow, New York. We had a great dialogue. And, you know, you said to me straight up, Steve, I get the 10 to 90, 10 thing, but you got to have the tear where the artists get 100% of the money. And I said, yeah. you know what? You're right. And the thing that I knew, listen, I, first of all, I listen to you. I don't. Yeah. I don't listen. I don't have a point of view on anything that anybody says that they know better than me. I just shut yeah. the fuck up. And listen, that's called. Right. OK, so <laughs> you know the shit. I'm listening to you. That's number one. Number two. I also know that just saying distribution is not enough anymore. I got to yeah. be able to say, distribute you. But now we just announced a deal with ESPN, NBA, NBA 2K. I'm announcing another partner this week because I want artists to know not only can you um, come with us and get distribution, but you could also get your music synced. Because like you said, yeah. Steve, when you when you went back in the days, you were like, I noticed it, Kylie Jenner, Instagram sports sites. Those are things that promote your music. So the yeah. more people that are syncing your music and that are using it, the more you got a chance for your shit to blow. So if you're a distributor, yeah. how could you not have an arsenal of sync opportunities so that the yeah. artists can actually get distribution plus opportunity? What y'all gonna start see how y'all how y'all can start really infiltrating and fucking up the the game on an even wider level once you start. The sync game all of a sudden is like, then what is publishing anymore? What's what's being with the publisher? Because publishers are, you know, you want them to get you in movies and TV, um, and video games and shit. But it's like, yo, if there's one stop I'm shop, I'm telling you, the I'm signing all the video game companies. Let me just let you know I'm signing all of them. I'm signing all yeah. of them. I'm signing yeah. all the video. I'm gonna sign all the TV stations. The video game companies, they want to yeah. fuck with me. They yeah. want to fuck with me. We with with ESPN, I got 700 sinks. I got Crazy. 700 sinks already done. I, I'm walking around right now talking to you with 700 fucking sports center sinks in my pocket. As if you're a publisher, which is that's what's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Publishers don't have that. I that's what I'm it's, saying though. Like publishers I'm are really supposed to be getting you sinks. Right Yo, I major, got labels are, major labels are supposed to get you syncs, but oh. I never relied on that like that. Publishers <laughs> really get the syncs. I got fucking 60 spots in NBA 2K right now. I got one of them. <laughs> you got one of them. I mean, this is what we're doing off the rip, man. Yeah, nah, Yo. you're bro, you're, ki you're killing that. Like, But that's the thing. It's like you could tell with someone like you, uh, that's why I, I always resonated with your energy because it's very like, Fuck you! I'm gonna get it done, and I'm the shit, and I'm the best, and I'm and I'm and I make shit shake. Like, I, I I hope, I hope, and I know I will be. I hope that I have the energy I do at your point in your career because it's like those are the people who play for free, damn near. It's like there's people like you who are the Kobe's and the Lebrons who it's like those motherfuckers just like to ball. You know what I'm saying? They just like to play. And they like to win. Like, cool, the money, extra. That's awesome. But I'm what? I'm trying to fuck y'all up. I, can't, <laughs> I, got goosebumps, I got goosebumps right now because I, I'm, I swear to you, I feel like I'm getting started. I, I, my, yeah, right. My, That's when fucking I came, different. When I came That's up, different. my dad, we were immigrants from Trinidad. And my dad, whether I was a mechanic working on cars or in the music business, I didn't feel like because I was in the music business that I should work any differently than some guy changing oil on a car. Right. I felt right. like just because I made more money doesn't mean that I should work any less harder. Yeah. I don't know how to work less harder. Same. Same. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Talking about, right? So I just turned 50 last week and I've been rich for a very long time. Like, that's <laughs> the fact. And but I don't even think about it that way because right. there's so much more for me to do and to give. Because whether I can help this next generation of artists never sign a bad record deal again 
or I could help change the industry. Whatever industry it is, God gave me a gift and he gave me energy and wisdom. And I got to use that. If I don't use that, then I've disrespected the gift that I it's got. It's a slap in the face. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not doing that. I'm not doing yeah. that. And, and, and you're clearly not doing that. That's why when we met how, each how other. Do you, on, some, on some like other shit, how do you feel about never being satisfied? Because that's how I feel. Like, pause. But I like just never. It's never enough. The more you get, the more you want. You know? And is it greed or is it ambition? At what I'm gonna time? Tell you, I'm gonna tell you, with me, I will tell you this. It's not, it's not money for me. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I never once said I want to be a billionaire. And I I think when guys say that, and it's you know, I think that shit is corny, to be honest with you. <laughs> all those I want to be a billionaire guys, a lot of them, some of them my friends, when they say that, it's like they wore a whack outfit to me. That shit is corny. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the, Yo, the amount of conversations me and my friends have had was like, if you can't dress, I already know your music is trash. Is crazy. By the way, I can tell you that it's. I can tell you a very funny story about that because um, a lot of artists can't dress. Uh, I think it's a fact. A lot of artists. <laughs> I think Bro, that you know, was... not to cut you off, you know it's crazy. Whenever somebody hates on me, right? My my boy Bugus will be like, he can't dress. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I, you know, listen, I remember one time I was coming up early in the game, and Fifty Cent was on fire. I mean, yeah, fire. yeah. Oh my god! And you know, I signed Fifty early in his career, and he's fucking awesome. He really is that street dude for a hundred percent. But um, you know, he put out the record, he was on fire, and I remember speaking to Jay on the phone, and you know, it looked like 50 was gonna go take Jay's spot. And I'm <laughs> like, you don't have to worry about that. He says, What do you mean? I said, because he can't dress. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he can't dress. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. That is you just like about that guys is... can't dress. <laughs> yo imagine just like but like it's real though that's just the perspective you know who else said that, who said that is Rick Ross Rick Ross said in an interview like yo they just go hand in hand fashion and taste and rap it's like if you can't dress I'm just not listening to it it's crazy <laughs> you can out records but there's a certain ceiling when you're fucking dancing <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yo, it's bro, true. You be looking you at some people looking crazy, and it's like no wonder your shit sounds like that, bro. You look. How do you wear that jacket with those pants, man? What's wrong? With you? It's <laughs> but like it's you crazy even... because fifty because get rich or die trying is the craziest shit ever. Get rich or but... die trying. Let me tell you something. But there's not a lot of fashion. Oh, get rich or die trying. It's a bulletproof vest. It's a but fifty is the fifty is one of my favorites ever. Though. Get, forget. That's... Forget. I can't say enough great things about 50. And right. that first album is crazy. And he will wash T.I. It, it would be embarrassing what he would do to T.I. Yeah. if they ever yeah. did a battle. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah. just saying that. T.I.'s got some shit, though. But I think, I mean, 50 like, years. I don't give a. Listen, bro. Listen bro, to that I, first I, album. I started, ra I started rapping because of M and 50. So I got to just like 50s. Come on. All you got to do is listen to. The mixtape he put out, Power of a Dollar, and then listen yeah. to that first album. And then you can pick some joints. The two records on the game album that he wrote, Hated to Love yeah. It, and This Is How We Do. Oh, my God. Come on, And he man. just had it in his back pocket. Okay? Get the fuck. 21. 21, 21, questions, is, 21 questions is the greatest song ever fucking made. <laughs> Come on, man. 21 questions is God's plan. It's just, you guys, I mean, yeah. these, are, these are joints. I don't know yeah. what the fuck T.I., yeah. he's going through a midlife crisis right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he can fuck yeah, insane. I like T.I., but he can't fuck with, he can't fuck with Future. Future. I, I, I think 50's catalog of just like, if we're talking about Play 20 smashes, I don't know too many people going up against 50 like that. I don't know. Well, it's a short, 50's 
Fifty, but we got. 20. It's a guy, very short list. The guy, I think the guy. Songs, I, think, I think I think Rick Ross. First of all, got twenty songs. Hold on, songs Rick Ross, body. bro. Let me tell you something about Rick Ross. Rick Ross body. is Rick Ross. Rick Ross goes to the Most studio. People. Let me tell you something. Rick Ross pulled up in this studio two nights in a row, like this pat, like two days ago, like two nights in a row. Rick Ross is one of the most, and I told him this, and we like all my homies, we Best know this. Best like, guys of all time, bro. Ross is his catalog is so consistent, it's disgusting. It's like I think Ross could go fifty songs against a lot of people. You know what yeah. I'm saying, like. Ross has Ross's catalog is ridiculous. It's like, bro, you've been solid for how many albums in a row? Like, By the way, Jesus Ross, I think Ross put out one questionable album. Which one? Outside of that, I think his fourth. He slipped on one album. I can't. I can't think of the name uh, of it right now. I think I he slipped know. on one album. I, I'll say when we get offline, I'll send it that he slipped on one album. Ross, that was it. Man, but Ross I, is fucking I'm lethal, a Ross bro. Fanatic. For yeah, Ross, Ross is lethal. Ross's verse when Devil in a Blue Dress. Um, one of the um, verses. Listen, listen. Ross's verse on Devil in a New Dress is 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 something out of this world. It's something <laughs> like I don't even know how you. I don't even know how you captured that fucking pocket and tone the, with the guitar, bro. Are you kidding? It's like because people don't understand as a writer. There's certain words that just sound good on beats. There's certain words that sound good. Like, yeah. fuck, fuck the bars. Like, there's certain syllables in the sound of the word. That's He just picked the best word for the whole shit. Man, and, motherfucker. Nah, that's just crazy. And all, that, all that shit he did with French and them niggas, don't stop. Come on, bro. You can't you ever, even deal with I haven't heard a whack Ross verse in my life. In my life. Ross is one of the greats. So anyhow, Ross, Future, um, <clears throat> to me, those two guys got deep, deep catalogs. Not to Future, be Future would fuck some people up. Future would fuck some people up. Yeah, uh, Future. Um, <clears throat> Chains, now, Chains got a really good catalog. Yeah. He's on a lot of hot records. He's on a lot of hot records. Yeah, two chains will fuck some people it's up. Tough, it's, it's tough for T.I. It really is tough because he hasn't had... T.I. has some enough. shit, though. T.I. has it's some shit. shit. So, yeah, he did. He had, it's, been a, it's been a long time. You got to have a little refresh. You need a little Quavo. You need a little sprinkle or something. <laughs> <laughs> just can't be out there with no spice. That's you know crazy. <laughs> 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 You were the best, bro. Thank you so much for your time. I ain't gonna take any more of your time. Thank you for uh okay. sharing that was amazing, man. For sharing all your knowledge. Yeah. Um, all the artists out here. We got a lot of young artists signing in from all over the world. They want to learn from you, Russ. You're the one yeah. you got the receipts. You're gonna make a million dollars a month. That's the goal. Yes, You're gonna make come a on. A month yeah, bro. As an independent artist, you believe that independent is the way that's gonna change the industry. And I'm going to yeah. sit there and I'm going to do my motherfucking thing with you, brother. Thank Let's you. Let's do it. Okay. All right, Legendary. Bro. No, Love. don't edit any of this shit. They got to let this whole shit run like that. We let it run just like this. Legendary. All right, bro. Let's talk soon. All right, bro. All right, peace. All right. All right. Yeah.